Hi guys, it's Luke at Young Writers and I'm here with two very amazing people. Would you like to give me a brief introduction about yourselves? Oh, I, I, is it us you're talking about? Are we the very amazing people? You are. <laughs> I've never been called well, You will be the best people to tell us who you are and what you've been doing. Absolutely. Well, my name is Gareth Peter and I am a children's writer from sunny Nottingham. It's not, Well, actually, it's not so sunny today. From lovely Nottingham, we'll say. And I write uh, children's picture books. Amazing. Yeah, hi, Luke. Um, uh, and uh, I'm Gary Parsons. I'm an illustrator. Um, I've been an illustrator for quite a long time. So some people might know me for I'm really good at drawing poo now from the Dinosaur that Pooped series amongst other things so yes and thrilled to be doing this book with gareth amazing well yeah we are here to talk about the wonderful book my daddy's so where did the journey of this book begin i guess that's down to me i hope gary doesn't mind if i start this one off um so um i adopted um with my other half twice we've adopted two beautiful boys they're now seven and five they're absolutely amazing, full of energy, full of life, and we read to them all the time. Every single night we read several books, and it's amazing to share that connection and journeys and, and adventures uh, that come from books themselves. But I struggled to find the kind of books that showed diverse families, ones that really resonated and, and spoke to us. That There are some amazing books, and I urge all of you know all of your uh, viewers to, to go out and, and have a look at all of them but there was there wasn't one that kind of um, reflected the excitement of books and the reality of of our family dynamic and so I thought I'd write one and that's <laughs> what I did um, I decided to start it um, I decided to do it in rhyme because a lot of children's books are in rhyme but I used to write songs and musical theatre shows and I thought I, I think there's a a lyrical nature and, and, a, and a melody to a, a picture book that I think would go very well to something bright and, and exciting and, and flashy. Um, and then I managed to find an agent and then I'm, she managed to find a publisher, which is Puffin Books. I remember Puffin Books from when I was a kid at school. We used, get, we used to get these like little, I think it's called the Puffin Post, little, little catalogs where you used to tick your book orders off, um, send you the money in a little envelope and then get your book <laughs> in a few weeks. It was amazing. And the moment they said they wanted to publish this book, I was like, wowzers. And then that was it. They decided to get an amazing illustrator and a certain Gary stepped forward. Yes. So that's where I came in. Um, so <laughs> I was working, so I was doing the poop books with um, our editor at Random House, Joe Marriott. And so um, he thought it'd be a perfect match because I'm also in a same sex relationship and I've also adopted two boys. So this book really is a, it's like a bit like a dream come true for me because it was, it's a, it's a, instead of I'm, I'm not drawing something that, you know, I'm not drawing poo, I'm not drawing dinosaurs flying through space. It's something about uh, my life and something that I've actually, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. very close to my heart. But I think, Gareth, you should, maybe you should mention about the, the, uh, the new writers' competition, because that might be important. For, oh, yes, absolutely. For so um, I, I actually, before I got my agent, I actually applied to a scheme that uh, Penguin Random House, they're the, the biggest publishers in the UK, and, and Puffin Books fall under Penguin. They were doing a big shout out um, for a project called Right Now. They were looking for underrepresented, uh, underrepresented writers. So people from BAME backgrounds, disability writers, mental um, writers with mental health issues and LGBTQ plus writers as well. And I applied for this. I didn't send this book in, um, I, I must add. I, I sent other things in as well and they liked my style of writing. And it was at that time that I got an agent and the two kind of married together and I got right through the scheme from about 48,000 people down to the last um, 10. Wow, and that was amazing. That, it was a dream come true. I was like, is, is this real? It, it, it's <laughs> amazing. But I still hadn't shown them the My Daddy's book. So ah. that they took me on the strength of writing, but it was my agent who kind of said, this is what I think you need to do because of 
having an authentic voice like Gary was just saying. And so now the exciting thing is the biggest publishers in the UK and one of the biggest in the world have released their very first Two Daddies book, which is a first for having the writer and the illustrator um, from a same sex two daddies uh, background. It's never been done before. This is it's a first and we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's definitely something that you can tell comes from a place. I mean, like deep within you guys, it's something that's really close to home. It's something that you've brought your authentic selves to. And it comes through, I think, in the quality of the book and, and like the heartwarming feeling that you get when you read it. I mean, I'm not uh, the age demographic for a picture book, obviously. <laughs> However, you know, I read it at my desk and it's just it's a lovely, lovely story that you, you can feel the genuine passion that was put into it. And I think that's that's so important. So uh, kind of on that, could you tell us a little bit more about what drove you to, to write this book? I know you mentioned it uh, a, a touch before, but yeah, can you go into that for us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the number one word, love. Um, I love my family more than anything, like I'm sure every parent does as well. And that bonding of, of reading at nighttime and that, that connection you have with your child, you know, when they're when they're assessing things in their own head, they're processing what's on the page. It's, it's, it's magical, it's absolutely magical. And um, I, I, I said recently that um, if you look at the world through a child's eyes, you see it as an accepting world, a tolerant world, a, a world that um, is just loving of the things that um, the child sees in front of them. And to get that out of a book that you have written, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It, it, it ups the ante even, even more. So I wanted to do this out of love for my boys. Whether or not it would have gotten published, to me, that I don't think would have mattered at that point because it was for them. Um, but the more I started reading picture books, not finding exactly what I was looking for to talk about our family dynamic, that's kind of made me spur even more to... to you know, talking to my agent about it and her suggesting it to the publishers. And it kind of grew and grew and, and so many people have got on board and given us such positive comments. I, I didn't think when I started it that a little book just for my boys would resonate so wildly with um, the whole, you know, the, the whole of the UK because it, it, it's not just for same-sex couples. Mm. This is a, a book a diverse, inclusive book, colourful because of Gary's amazing images, um, for everyone. And I, I'm, I'm so thankful, so thankful they've done it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's representative of a much wider society. As you say, even if you are not part of a same-sex couple, it's, you know, we don't always read books that directly are the positions that we're in. And having, just having this on a bookshelf gives a, a much more accurate, Kind of depiction to a child about what the world looks like and it's important to get that across even if you're not part of that specific situation and and i totally understand that i think it's, it's great work that you're doing and, and have gone towards that um so for yourself you say that um to to get onto the illustrations the book kind of came to you pre-made but what drove you to do this and and jump on board and and be so enthusiastic about it and bring the wonderful colorfulness to it um, well, it just it was it it just uh, seemed so perfect. Um, I didn't really I couldn't really possibly turn it down. Um, uh, it was a chance for me to draw very emotively and uh, you know give something else, uh, which was nice. I mean, I, I can't really say much more than that other than it just seemed like such a good match, Gareth and I working on this together. And there's 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 so much room for. You know, expressing a diverse family out there on the bookshelf, in the bookshops. We need books like this. Yeah, for sure. And uh, this is the, the question on everyone's tongues at the moment, but how has lockdown been serving you? Which, whichever one, one, two, three, seven, a hundred, or whichever lockdown. It's as, you know, in, in the creative industry, it's been quite a difficult hit. And uh, I think people imagine writers to kind of like hole up into this nook in their back garden or something and, and kind of use the opportunity to get writing. But how have you found it, both of you? So what's you know, lockdown? I'm, I'm a bit confused, but are we meant to be <laughs> locked down or something? Yes. Um, when you, like Gary and I, have a young family, 
and schools are not open as fully. Um, you have both got your children at home doing the work that the, the school has set. So you don't, I find or found, I didn't really have much time to write at all. And okay. I think I kind of went to a little bit of a dark place, not having that creative, you know, expression and, and input that I, I really wanted to have. But you're thankful for every day because, you know, you're fit and healthy, touch wood. You've got your lovely children at home there, you know, fretting about the homework that they don't understand. And you don't understand it, but you pretend yeah. you understand it. And, you know, making wacky things and, and we kept making explosions, volcanoes, and it went all over our kitchen table. I've ruined the kitchen table, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. And um, so ups and downs, writing, not so much, um, but children are back at school at the moment and I've got a little bit more of the creative juices flowing. So watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. And uh, what I mean, what are the, the did you find any secrets to teaching at home other than ruining tables continuously? Did you find any kind of like hacks to it? Yes, think, baking and biscuits. OK. <laughs> I think, what about um, you? yeah, the, the homeschooling, it, you know, that just took up so much time. <laughs> I had loads less time during lockdown with with the homeschooling. I'm not great at it. Terrible at maths. Good at drawing. Terrible at maths. <laughs> So, that, so they're now doing really well at art in school, but unfortunately, probably not maths. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I this, this is going out to a lot of, um, well, hopefully a lot of people in general, but obviously it's got its demographic. But what were your favourite books growing up? What, what kind of had that impact on you when you was growing up to lead you to the jobs that you do now? Gary, do you want to, to start? Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Dr. Zeus, um, particularly uh, Rupert Bear annuals. I don't know, I'm not even sure if they even exist anymore, but I never used to read them. I just used to look at the pictures and just make up stories for myself. Um, uh, yes, what else? Um, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was a big favourite. I could kind of just, I just ended up drawing that, really. Um, amazing. Yeah, so those three, I think. How about you, Gareth? I absolutely loved books um, growing up and I, my, my parents read to me every night as well. And I, I remember this one book vividly. I must have asked for it thousands of thousands of times. And I understand what that's like as a parent on the receiving end, reading the same book over and over. It was, um, I can't even remember the title though, but I remember it was about a, an overflowing porridge pot and it just, porridge just kept coming and coming and it was streaming down the street. That was the picture book that stood out for me, but it was the Beano annual. I had stacks of them, stacks and stacks of them, probably almost every single year since they came out in the 60s. I, I loved the colourful pictures. Um, but in terms of like stories going into chapter books and mid-grade, I just I want to thank all the school teachers out there for, for not making us for me because it was an absolute joy, but all the books that we chose to read, I loved that, reading in class, getting a chance to perform and read out, you know, texts as well with everybody. Not everyone enjoyed that in, in, in our class, but I certainly did. Loud, proud, shouted out. Um, but all the wonderful books we read as, as part of school was just, I've never forgotten that. So school teachers out there, you are amazing. Keep They're it up. Ones. I mean, I mean, a huge part of what we do here is basically give thanks to the teachers. You know, we we aren't the ones in the classrooms teaching children. We kind of like help with that and and deal with the, the resources and kind of try to help teachers do their amazing job. So I resonate, that resonates massively. But I really found interesting what you said, Gary, about how when you was reading as a child growing up and you actually would kind of focus on the illustrations and you would draw the books yourself, that to me kind of screams that this was something that you were always on a path to go and do. The passion was really there. And I think fine, the final question that I would give to both of you is this is going out to a lot of budding young authors and illustrators and, you know, lots of people in this industry. What would your top tip or top tips, if you were, um, to, to these young ones that are trying to make it or want to, to do the jobs that you guys do in the future? So I go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think 
with your your you're right my focus was totally on on drawing and um when i was a kid i used to think i wanted to be an artist and i knew that um artists you know drew on pavements and things like that but that 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 was the job that i wanted to do even though it kind of wasn't a job um i think my advice to illustrators would be to there's a lot of talk about forming your own style and that's true that's that's quite an important thing to have but i think that only comes from being kind of true to yourself and allowing um your creativity to come out through your your pencil so that requires a lot of drawing and i would say draw everything so people on the bus when you're on the bus get your have, you know just draw everything and you will find it it will come amazing Absolutely. I would say, number one, be you. Completely and always and utterly be yourself. If you want to be creative, you can do it. Everyone has got a story in them. Everyone has got the ability to write and you can do it, whether it's just for you, whether it's just for your family and friends or whether it's you want to make a career out of it. Be expression that let the ideas, the passion, the music flood out of you because every single person Every single animal, I think, every single being on the, the whole wide world have, have got stories and excitement and love within them. And if you can get that down on paper and share that with someone, then you are amazingly fabulous. You can do it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. I think the book is out now. Would I be right in saying? So, so make sure to go get the make go grab the book. And thank you so much for your time and for creating this it's it's truly an important book it's not just a piece of literature it's it's as you guys have focused on it truly goes towards doing something bigger and i think it it's it's crucial in moving forward and moving the industry forward and i think it's fantastic work so thank you so much for your time and thank you very much, um, yeah thank you. i hope people read it and i hope everyone reads it and sees it yeah, thank everyone. you so much i see you later guys bye thank you